Um, response to last week's who wants hot, uh, oh, to the girl who wants a hot boyfriend. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Billy Nutsack Brains. You had a lady listener write in about being a six or something around that and wanting to be with a guy that's a 10. Being a lady listener and rate my looks as a four. Hey, welcome to my world. While my younger, hotter husband is a nine, I felt the need to write in. Girl, it's no different for us as it is for men who date hotter partners. It's easier. It's either you are a sugar mama or got confidence through the roof. Guys are not going to run after you like they do the nines or tens. But if you play the long game like the funny, ugly guys do, you will bag a 10. Uh, What do I mean by this? Don't act so thirsty for attention when you are out with your much hotter looking girlfriends. Be the comic relief and not in a self-deprecating way. Do it in a I'm smarter and wiser than everyone. Look at this. Yeah, like I'd make a great mother. These whores will fucking blow you in the parking lot. That's all they're good for. Why are they whores? Because they're better looking? Because you're jealous, Bill? Okay, maybe. Guys are just as attracted to confidence as women are. It just doesn't happen right away because they are slow and take a while to see it. You know, just when I thought you were going to compliment men. Um, no, it's because we're, we're fucking visually, we're, we're wired that way. All right. And, uh, yeah, we get taken to the cleaners because of that. Lastly, get your own damn interests and focus on you. As women, we get told all kinds of fucked up shit. Like you'll never get a husband acting like that. Exactly. Or this will make men like, like you, if you stay skinny or dress this way or whatever, fuck everyone and do you and you will get your 10. The, right there, exactly. This is what I'm waiting for every fucking feminist out there to do, to stop fucking blaming guys. Like, that's all empowering shit. That's like, I, that's the, what you just said for women out there is what I fucking tell young comics. Stop trying to write your fucking act so the industry notices you. Go out and do what the fuck you want to do. Go find your audience and let these cunts come to you. This is, I'm reading this shit, you're talking to women, and I'm feeling uplifting. I'm going to go smoke a cigar. No. If all that fails, make a shit ton of money, and men will want to be your trophy husband. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. Go fuck yourself, chub, chubby girl with a hot, younger husband. Well, there you go. All right. Oh, Jesus, speaking of cigar smoking. Cigar smoking to pipe smoking. I got to go back to what this woman just wrote. I'm telling you. All right, men and women can learn a lot from what she just said there. That is the secret to success. All right, stop fucking thinking about what other, you go out and do what the fuck you want to do. You're not hurting anybody. Do what the fuck you want to do. Believe in yourself. All right, and stop walking around trying to find another fucking parent, you know, looking for everybody's goddamn approval. Just fucking relax, figure it out. Baby steps each day, and next thing you know, you're up the fucking mountain. All right, cigar smoking to pipe smoking. Dear B for Vendetta. I don't know what that means. I'm a new listener. I know V for Vendetta. I am listening. I'm a new listener within the last two years. I am a South Jersey guy. Hey, how the fuck you doing? And most of my knowledge of you was your 2006 reprimand of the local Philly crowd. Was that that long ago? 15 years ago. I've really come to enjoy your podcast. (laughs) Yeah, it'll grow on you if you keep listening. Um, I have a five-year-old son, and being an older parent can relate to a lot of the same things. I lean conservative, but I appreciate rational thought rather than party politics, myself included, something that Americans seem to have moved away from lately. I tend to lean left, but like, yeah, If something makes sense to me, I don't give a shit what color the tie is that's telling it to me. So, um, what is he says? I'm an occasional cigar smoker, but really love briar pipes and tobacco. Aside from looking like an old man, it's a great way to sit back and relax and force yourself to slow down. Yeah, I know. But then you have a never-ending cold. Uh, I'm not sure if you're ever, if you ever considered pipe smoking. I tried it. I can't keep it going. There's an art to it that I couldn't figure out. And then I was like, do I really want to figure this out? 
um, cause both my grandfathers, uh, smoked pipes and, uh, it was funny. They would just bust that thing out. You know, we'd be walking around Faneuil Hall when they were in town. And my grandmother would go in, you know, with my mom or something to go look at clothes or something. And he would just stand outside, you know, find a bench, just pop a little tobacco in. He would just sit there huffing on it. It was great. It smelled amazing, too. <clears throat> there are hundreds of tobacco blends, both aromatic and non. Uh, lots of taste to explore. Collecting the different styles of pipes is a lot of fun as well. But again, socially, society ranks tobacco smoking just below apartheid in terms of offensiveness. All the best to you. Yeah, I, um, yeah, it looks cool as hell to me and shit like that. But like, I just have to stop. I'm not going to throw my cigars out. I'm just going to bring them down to the comedy store and get a bunch of other people hooked on them. That's a stupid thing. I should just throw them out. I don't know, but I'm getting rid of them. That's it. I'm done. Done. Fuck you. See you later. All right. Hitler's Pope in Saratoga. <coughs> Dear Billy the Brick, longtime listener, first time writing in, was at the Garden Show, the real one, uh, plus MGM in D.C. Um, I don't know what the real one means. Uh, the TD Bank North Garden? I mean, that's, I mean, the Boston Garden was the real garden. That's where the most championships were won. All right? Don't get it fucking confused. There was 21 championships won there, 16 NBA titles, and five Stanley Cups. Okay, I don't know what happened in, in your garden. If you're, if you're trying to talk sports, you know, or you're trying to talk about respect, it's just like, it's just location. It's in Manhattan and everybody wants to fucking live there. I guess that that's what it is because it's certainly not because of the success of those two sorry ass franchises that are, okay. Bill. Going to the show in Saratoga Springs this August. Couldn't believe it when I saw that place on your tour. Yes, sir. <clears throat> If you've never been, it's a beautiful place, a true oasis for Deegan, horse racing fans like me, D-E-G-E-N. I don't know what that means. Uh, you Wait, well, let's look it up. Let's see if that's a, a, a spelling error. Or if that's, okay, Deegan, horse racing. That's not coming up at all. Inside nature's giants, racehorses. I see just a big rack of ribs. What's that, a fucking glue factory? All right, I don't know what you were trying to say there. Um, you're going at the peak of racing season too. Fun town with a bunch of bars and history. And if you have time to go to the races, it's a great experience filled with beautiful ladies, beautiful women. It's uh, the one horse track where you don't feel like a complete degenerate, but rather a high-class gent transported back into the roaring 20s. Well, what about... Uh, Churchill Downs, that's how I felt when I went there. Um, a lot of, you know, when you go to horse racing, I just felt like when you went to the Kentucky Derby, there was a lot of people like dressing the part of a degenerate gambler. <laughs> and it was actual, like I probably think like the Kentucky Derby is like St. Patrick's Day for alcoholics. Like, man, I'm just going to stay home and drink. I ain't going down there with all those fucking yahoos. You know, they don't know how to spend their college, their kids' college education. They're doing it ironically. Um, I recommend Old Brian's Inn for a meal. Cool little stone tavern with great food. Building is from 1773. And the rumor is that George Washington himself and Alex Hamilton. Oh, you're in a sort of fucking um, familiar relationship with this guy you mean alexander hamilton stayed there while surveying battlefields that's just a rumor that means they didn't stay there uh really right writing in though to discuss hitler's pope eugenio Pacelli, pius the 12th and the vatican position during world war ii as you were talking about it on the 1018 podcast oh yeah they kind of were uh I don't know. I think they were, they kind of were in the middle <clears throat> and sort of probably rooting for the Germans because they were going to try to put a religion out of business. And that's the business they were in, right? Super interesting topic. 
and one that I actually wrote a massive paper on way back in college that I got an A for. Yeah, yeah, look at me, a history major in college. Why? I don't really know, but it was fun at the time, especially being high during lectures. Um, Anyway, my stance ended up being that he actually did all he could to help the Jewish people and just treaded carefully around the Nazis. I mean, imagine being smack dab in the middle of Italy, not only surrounded by crazy Mussolini, but you've got a front row seat to watch the Nazis steamroll through the continental through continental Europe in months with dive bombing planes, monster tanks, and methed out superhuman soldiers. Yeah, I mean, people choose their own survival, yeah. He did a lot for the Jewish people. Look at this. Included secretly sheltering Jews in various churches, libraries, and monasteries held by the Catholic Church. Well, then why didn't they give the gold back? Why did Jewish people have to knock on the door and be like, I believe you got something that belongs to us? Uh, Well, approximately 80% of the Jews in Europe perished. 80%? Oh, my God. During World War II, 85% of Italians, 40,000 Jews were saved. It's reported no fewer than 3,000 Jews were hidden away at Castel Gandolfo, the Pope's summer residence. Uh, Well, all right. Look at that. That's, That's a good thing for my religion. Who knew? 